Welcome to the University of Minnesota Duluth, a place where people congregate to share knowledge, ideas, and meet new people. The university offers majors ranging from chemical engineering to classical English literature. The university encourages students to pursue their passions and further their educational goals. UMD offers a wide variety of outdoor activities for those who are more adventurous. Clubs for mountain bikers and hikers, rowing, snowshoeing, and cross-country skiing to name a few. The university's close location to Lake Superior makes studying glacial lake ecosystems and water easily accessible to students and researchers. Another great opportunity UMD offers is the ability to learn collaboratively with schools across the world. For example, this video is the product of Collaborative Online Interactive Learning, or COIL. Those of us from the Anthropology class of Digital and Participatory Methods are pairing up with students from a university in San Luis Potosi, Mexico. Our goal is to produce a comparative sustainability study of, of UMD's campus with a small community near San Luis Potosi called La Pila. La Pila is a small community, population 6,722, with male and female ratio being about 1 to 1. Most of the male population are workmen, and the women work as cleaners or stay at home to take care of the family. The main focus on La Pila is the work done on the local school. Our collaborative instructor from San Luis has helped the school become more sustainable with the precious resource of water. Since water is essential to all life forms, it is important for us to understand the ways we interact with it. Hey, my name is Anna, and water is important to me because it's in everything that we drink and it helps grow all the food around us. Hi, I'm Eric, and water is important to me because when you live in Duluth, water is all around you. Hi, I'm Amanda. Water is important to me because it keeps me hydrated. Hi, I'm Nate. Water is important to me because when it gets really cold, it turns into snow and I get to snowboard. Understanding these perspectives gave us an idea of just how important water is. Water is crucial to any community, whether it's a city on a great lake such as Duluth, Minnesota, or a small community such as La Pila located in an arid region in Mexico. Through collaboration between anthropology students at UMD and environmental engineering students at the Autonomous University of San Luis Potosi, Mexico, we will explore water sustainability in two different contexts. Water sustainability at UMD provides several possible topics of focus. For example, UMD has made progress on drinking water sustainability. The university has installed water bottle filling stations throughout the campus. Our housing department has installed gooseneck faucets in residence hall bathrooms making filling water bottles an easy convenience. By making more clean water filling stations available, the university aims to help reduce the amount of plastic waste on campus. Water sustainability on campus has extended to the athletic field as well. An automatic irrigation system has been installed in the fields to improve soil conditions, water use, and reduce spending by the university. A third example of water sustainability, reducing stormwater runoff from campus facilities emerged as the most interesting to our research team. Stormwater reduction efforts will be the focus of our discussions of UMD's water sustainability efforts. Water that flows from land surfaces and buildings during rainstorms is called stormwater runoff. Excess runoff can lead to erosion, flooding, and pollution if not managed properly. The excess water generally flows into the surrounding creeks, ponds, and Lake Superior. In 2009, UMD had 3.2 million square feet of impervious surface on campus, which is approximately 238 Olympic-sized swimming pools. With this much impervious surface, rainwater is not absorbed at all and runs rampant through the streets. The university aims to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff that enters the lake by using a variety of methods, which will be discussed throughout the film. In some parts of the world, like La Pila, Mexico, water does not arrive in the form of storms often. The region this city is in has a dry and wet season, and the wet season is only about three months long. Because of this, the amount of rain received in the three months can be overwhelming for a community that is used to dry weather. When La Pila does get rain, the rain runs down away from the city because it is situated on top of a valley. Stormwater runoff does not greatly affect the community on top of the valley, but it does affect the community of San Luis Potosi, where our COIL collaborators are from. In San Luis, there have been many floods that wreck the road system and make all activities come to a halt. 
the need for stormwater sustainability is pressing in San Luis. Another water issue the communities are working to fix is the amount of fluoride in the water. The tap water there has a lot of fluoride, so much it causes tooth decay. Because of this, many people just buy bottled water instead of trying to fix the system. How does UMD and La Pila transport the water out of the surrounding area? To begin, UMD is situated on two local watersheds, meaning that rainwater that falls on the UMD campus drains into two different nearby creeks, Oregon and Tisher. Basically, UMD is on a ridge that separates water flow in two different directions because of the topographical area. If you can imagine, a watershed carries water shed from the land after rain falls and snow melts. The city of Duluth is located on a hillside and is made up of several watersheds that are interconnected creating a path towards Lake Superior. These images, provided by the Regional Stormwater Protection Team, who are the experts of stormwater runoff for the region, show how buildings in the watershed are connected by large pipes, tanks, and creeks that are sometimes weathered over time. If the pipes are not maintained well or cleaned, pollution of the runoff into the lake may increase and be very costly to replace. In our interview with Chris Kleist, one of the executives at RSPT, we were shown the difference in Duluth stormwater sustainability by comparing a photo of UMD of the 1930s and a photo from today. As you can see, the city has a great deal of development over the last 80 years, as opposed to the 1930s before the university was built. As the city was developed, planners built over many streams and forced them into underground culverts. This emerged as a problem that became evident during the flood in 2012, when 10.1 inches of rain fell on Duluth in a two-day period. The San Luis River rose about 11 feet, reaching heights upwards of 16 feet. While the region has made tremendous strides in the sustainability of stormwater runoff, there is still more that we can do. Where the city our coil collaborators are from, San Luis Potosi has built collectors of stormwater, but there is a pressing need for more projects to route the stormwater runoff. How does UMD and La Pila incorporate sustainability in their issues with stormwater runoff? Well, UMD combats stormwater runoff with technologically advanced systems of rain gardens and green roofs. Rain gardens, which are composed of native Minnesota plants selected to absorb the excess water, can be seen throughout campus. UMD has the largest rain garden in northeastern Minnesota and makes the campus more aesthetically pleasing while holding up to 60,000 gallons of water, which is equal to 1,000 bathtubs of water, preventing excess runoff into the lake. A few buildings on campus also support green roofs. Green roofs are roofs that are designed to allow growth of plants that retain water and reduce erosion from the surrounding area. They also reduce wear and tear on the gutters normally used to direct the water off a normal roof. Buildings on campus with these roofs are our Civil Engineering Building, Bagley Classroom, and Salon Campus Center. And so the same concept works up on a roof is that if you can stop, basically it's saying is if you can stop the water before it starts to run, it doesn't have a chance to erode everything else away or it doesn't have a chance to, to pick up other pollutants. And so the idea with a green roof is that you, um, you actually hold as much water on the roof as you can. And whether it evaporates out just from the evaporation or whether it is evapotranspiration up through the plants, um, there's several different ways that, that it actually loses water. Um, with a regular roof, you would it just, once it hits the roof, and it's pretty much out. I mean, you, there's some in between. You have some rock roofs where there's a little bit of just normal evaporation. So that's, that's the whole idea with it, is, is if you don't, if the water doesn't move, you don't have a pollutant discharge. In La Pila, there are not many green roofs because the community does not get enough rain to support a green roof, nor do they use any landscaping or plants to absorb water. However, with the idea of our coil instructor from San Luis, the roof of the school in La Pila was redone to include gutters to collect stormwater and direct it to a tank underground. The rainwater is used to supply the school with irrigation water to support a garden that grows corn and beans. Another reason they need to collect stormwater is because La Pila does not have air water every day. Water comes from another city, and most days the water does not get allocated to Opila. So what now, and where do we go from here? While UMD has made progress in reducing the amount of stormwater runoff, we still have more to do. For example, 
We don't currently regularly monitor our stormwater runoff for pollution. Without such monitoring, we don't know how effective our stormwater management really is. Perhaps a reason for lack of continuous data on the possible pollution of stormwater runoff lies within the funding for the project. There is an overwhelming lack of funding. Members working for the stormwater prevention program often work on campus as engineers, professors, and students. They donate their time for the same amount of pay and put in almost 900 hours, sometimes between just three people. Projects may be funded through the university, primarily through grants and donations. If UMD were able to obtain more funding, there is no doubt that they could increase their sustainability of stormwater runoff and accumulate more data on the end results of the projects they've constructed on campus. However, as these are college administration level programs, how can students themselves get involved? We decided to talk with an ecology professor, Dr. Ted Ozerski, if it would be possible to help get students involved in running tests on stormwater runoff. Yeah, so uh, my name is Ted Ozerski. I'm an assistant professor at the Large Lakes Observatory. Uh, and at the biology department uh, here at the uh, University of Minnesota Duluth. Well, it sounds it sounds like a great project. Uh, some of these measurements are simple. Uh, some of these measurements are hard. Uh, so figuring out how aquatic life is affected is is difficult because it involves intensive sampling, for example, benthic algae or benthic animals, and a lot of uh, microscope work to identify things like for example nutrient analysis or measuring pH is quite simple and uh, we do it routinely we do nutrient analysis pretty routinely in my lab so that's something that we could uh, probably help with. In Lapila more funding could also improve conditions there. The community is poor so the amount of sustainability that can be integrated into this community is limited. With more awareness about the problem of fluoride and lack of water every day, Lapila could get even more support from the surrounding cities, or even the main city. The progress made on the school in Lapila is hopeful, and more project plans are in place to keep updating the sustainable features of the school. So with this, we have just one message for you. Go out and see how you can get involved in your community to help. Collect and utilize your rainwater supply, or help your community test stormwater runoff and protect the environment. The environment keeps us alive, and now it's up to us to keep the environment alive.